नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स दिस इज द लास्ट वीक ऑफ आर कोर्स एंड इन दिस वीक विल बी स्टडिंग आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरल नेटवर्क्स रिकॉल द लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन मॉडल विच हैड टू स्टेजेस द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज लीनियर कॉम्बिनेशन विच इज डब्ल्यू ट्रांसफोर्स एक्स एंड द आउटपुट विच इज डब्ल्यू ट्रांसफोर्स एक्स वी पास थ्रू अ नॉन लीनियर एक्टिवेशन and in case of logistic regression we use sigmoid nonlinear activation and sigmoid function basically crushes the real number that is between minus infinity to plus infinity to a number between 0 and 1 so the output of sigmoid function if you remember is between 0 and 1 when the input is a real number so in case of logistic regression basic unit of computation had two parts one is linear combination and second is non linear activation so let's see where does the neuron enter in the picture so the neuron accepts a number of inputs combine them linearly and simulate neural activity and see if they fire so this is a typical biological neuron where there is a cell which accept bunch of inputs then there is myelinated access trunk where some kind of computation happens and we get the output so inspiring from this biological neuron scientist proposed artificial neuron and artificial neuron again has two stages one is linear combination followed by non linear activation so a1 a2 a3 are inputs to this neuron and the way these inputs are combined are through the weights that are there on the edges that are connecting the input to the neuron so a1 is combined with weight w1 a2 is combined with weight w2 and a3 is combined with weight w3 so we have z which is the intermediate output or output of linear combination is equal to w1 a1 plus w2 a2 plus w3 a3 plus b and b is the bias and then the resulting linear combination z is passed through a uh, is passed through an activation function g so there is an activation function g that produces activation from the linear combination of the inputs a single neuron does not have much capacity when multiple neurons are connected together in a network we have a powerful model so in this case there are five inputs x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 and remember these are five different features that we are connecting to three different neurons in the first hidden layer and the output of these three neurons is getting connected to two nodes or two neurons in the output layer so here we will be getting two outputs per example and when we combine neurons in this way we are basically getting a very powerful model so in this course we will only be looking at feed forward network where information flows in one direction that is from left to right or from input to the output the arrows will be dropped in the subsequent image so input will always flow from left to right and will not explicitly show the arrows going forward in this presentation we will explore neural network in the context of supervised learning problems regression and multi class classification and as you know multi class classification is generalization of binary classification so when we are saying multi class classification you can easily specialize it to to obtain binary classification as usual we'll be using the following notation a which is small usual case a is used for scalar again small bold face letter is used for vector and vector has some n components and capital bold face letter is used for matrix so here a is the matrix and a i j is i j the entry of the matrix 
In case of regression, we have feature matrix X and labels Y. The feature matrix has size n, n, where n is number of data points or examples and m is the number of features. And the output has shape of n, that is one output per example. In case of classification, we have feature matrix with size n, m and the output is also n, k where number of classes is equal to k and this matrix is basically a one-hot matrix. So neural network is basically a black box model where we take input in m dimensional space and produce output in k dimensional space. So input is vector x and output is vector y. So this black box model produces a label, a real number for regression and a vector for classification where this vector contains a probability distribution over k classes. And the probability distribution that we get for classification, we call argmax on this probability distribution to get a predicted label for a given example. Let's start to understand what happens under the hood of neural network. So the question that we are interested in is how does a neural network transform the input to the output? So remember the forward pass which takes features in the input layer. Then it passes through a bunch of neurons in the, in the hidden layer and the output of the hidden layer is passed to the output layer that gives us the final output. So the network has a sequence of layers. The input to the network passes through these successive layers. Each layer transforms the input from the previous layer with the help of weights and activation functions. The entire process is termed as a forward pass. To understand how forward pass works, we need to study three components of a network which are layers, weights and biases and activation functions. There are three kinds of layers in the network. The first is the input layer, second is the hidden layer and third is the output layer. Input and output layers are fixed, the number of hidden layers can vary. The network that is shown over here has got two hidden layers. The first hidden layer has four neurons and the second hidden layer has got three neurons. The layers are indexed using L where L is between 0 to L and the capital L is a hyperparameter which is the number of layers. The layer 0 is always the input layer and layer L is the output layer. In between input and output, there could be multiple, multiple hidden layers. In general, the layer L denotes L hidden layer. The size of the layer or the number of neurons in each layer is also a hyperparameter. So S0 equal to M is number of input features. So the number of neurons in the input layer is equal to number of features in the input. Number of neurons in each of the hidden layer is specified by hyperparameters. And for the output layer, for a regression problem, we use a single neuron, whereas for a classification problem, we use k different neurons. So weights determine the importance of the connection or the edges between neurons. So in general, we are connecting input from layer L minus 1 to layer L. So from this particular neuron in layer L minus 1, we are connecting it to each neuron in the layer L. And there are these two edges and on each of these edges there will be weights. In the same manner, 
this particular neuron will also be connected to the second neuron in layer L. So at layer L, the total number of weights is equal to SL minus 1 into SL. These weights can be neatly packed into matrix WL and the matrix WL will have size SL minus 1 into SL. So in this case, there are, there are three inputs from SL minus 1, there are three activations from layer SL minus 1 which is input to layer L and you can see that the weights for each of the unit to the next one is specified in the in the row of this particular matrix. So here W11 is the importance of this particular age, W12 is importance of this particular age, W21 is importance of this particular age, W22 is importance of this particular age, W31 is importance of this age and W32 is importance of this age. This is how this weight matrix has to be interpreted. In addition to weights, there are biases. Each neuron at layer L has a bias associated with it. This results in a vector BL of biases at layer L. So in layer L, there are two neurons. Hence, the bias vector will have two entries one corresponding to each neuron. So B1 corresponds to bias of neuron 1 and B2 corresponds to bias of neuron 2. So let's again recall what happens in case of a single neuron. There is a linear combination or preactivation. We compute Z as W1A1 plus W2A2 plus W3A3 plus B that is Z which is linear combination of inputs and this linear combination is passed to nonlinear transformation G to obtain an activation. So you can represent pre-activations or linear combination in a vector form. The vector of input activation at layer L is denoted as A L minus 1 which has got A1, A2 and A3 and the vector of pre-activations at layer L is ZL. So there are two pre-activations Z1 and Z2 and the way we obtain ZL is basically by multiplying the activations from the previous layer into the weight vector plus bias. So in a vector form, this particular activation pre-activation for layer L can be obtained as ZL transpose is equal to AL minus 1 transpose WL plus BL transpose. And you know that ZL has shape N into SL. This activation from the previous layer has shape N into SL minus 1, WL has shape SL minus 1 into SL, and BL has shape. SL and you can verify that this particular operation on the right hand side results indeed into a matrix of size n cross SL. So let's write activation also in matrix form. So we have matrix of pre-activations at layer L is ZL and matrix of activations at layer L is AL. So we have ZL which is matrix of pre-activation or linear combination at layer L that is passed to a nonlinear activation to obtain activation matrix at layer L and it has got shape of N cross SL. Note that in the hidden layers G is applied element wise. Let's study why is an activation function required and why should it be nonlinear. So assume that there is no activation function for any layer, then the input will be a sequence of matrix product. So here we are ignoring bias for simplicity. So y hat will be equal to x into w1 
W2 all the way up to WL and all the product of these weights can be expressed as W so we have effectively XW and what is this XW? It degenerates into a simple linear model. So if you do not use any nonlinear activation we simply get a linear model and we have seen this in the tensor flow playground. So we'll look at three activation functions that are commonly used in the hidden less. One is the sigmoid activation and we are familiar with the sigmoid function which is 1 by 1 plus e raised to minus z. Then there is a tanh activation function which is a ratio of e raised to z minus e raised to minus z to e raised to z plus e raised to minus z. And ReLU is a third activation function that returns z whenever z is a positive real number and it returns 0 for z that is negative. So sigmoid graphically looks something like this. So any real number is crushed between values 0 and 1 by the sigmoid function. Whereas tanh returns a value between minus 1 to plus 1 for the real numbers. ReLU on the other hand returns value 0 for negative numbers and it returns the number for all the positive numbers. So basically in the positive number side we have a line at 45 degree and ReLU stands for rectified linear unit. The choice of activation function for the hidden layers is a hyperparameter. In practice, both sigmoid and tanh are found to suffer from the problem of vanishing gradients. ReLU is a good choice for networks with large number of hidden layers. So ReLU is used mostly as an activation function in the hidden layers. So the activation functions from output layers depends on the problem that we are solving. For regression, we use linear activation. So whatever output that we get at, at the final layer, we just pass it as it is, which is a linear activation. And in case of multi-class classification, we use softmax activation function. If you are solving a binary classification problem, we'll use a single neuron with sigmoid activation function. But for multi-class classification problem, we'll use softmax activation function and you already know how, how softmax is computed which is e raised to zi divided by sum over all k classes the value of e raised to zj where j is j where j denotes a single class so we sum across all k classes and this ratio is basically the probability of class i Let's look at how forward pass progresses. So let's do the forward pass for regression. So we initialize A0 to X which is activation for layer 0 is equal to the input or the input feature matrix to be specific. Then we run a loop for layer 1 to L and in in the loop we first compute the linear combination which is zl is equal to al minus 1 which is activation from the previous layer into the weight vector of, of this layer plus the bias. The resulting linear combination is passed through nonlinear activation to obtain the activation for this particular layer which is al. So at the end we assign y hat equal to al and we return y hat. So this is how we compute the, the regression y hat given the input feature matrix x. So here note that output layer has a single neuron and g is the identity for the output layer. X has size n cross m and y has size of n and al is the matrix of size n cross 1. Let's look at the forward pass for classification. 
it proceeds pretty much in the same manner except that output layer has Q neurons and G is the softmax for the output layer. So, so G is used as a softmax for the output layer and X has got size of N cross M, X is a feature matrix and Y hat which is a predicted label matrix has size N cross K. So in case of regression we are going to use squared error loss which is computed based on the actual label vector and the predicted label vector. So we can calculate this in numpy as 0.5 into np dot sum and the square of difference between the predicted value and the actual value. In case of classification we use categorical cross entropy loss and here this equation if you want to understand we can see that a n and a k are vectors of ones of size n and k and m is the if the m or this matrix is of size n cross k then 1 into m into 1 is the sum of all elements in the matrix and this particular operator over here is element wise product. So in numpy this simply gets converted as negative sum of y into log of y hat. 